A.N. Welcome, folks. This is Tommy O'Brien. My dad's out today. I'm going to try and fill in those shoes for the hour. And we got a little volatility, man, in both directions right now. You got the S&Ps barely in the red, as we talked about on the market kickoff there. 18,000 on the NASDAQ, 18,121 on the NASDAQ 100. Just like that, though, you give up 100 and what, 100? I mean, where were we? We were up at 18,100, 170 points. You trade lower, almost a full percentage point, a little bit of volatility ahead of the all important CPI number out tomorrow morning. Now, remember, Fed's preferred inflation gauge is actually the PCE. So there are a few certain components of the CPI that don't have as large of an impact on the PCE, so be careful on some of those headline numbers tomorrow, but nonetheless, market, little volatility ahead of those important numbers tomorrow. S&Ps, there it is on your chart. We're about 25 points above the highs that we made at 115 this morning. You accelerated to that area at about 1130, chopped around before we dip lower. You see the selling at about 215. You trade from 5050 down to 5035, and we've been chopping around there for about the last hour. S&Ps, off by three points. We've talked about the NASDAQ 100, slightly in the red right now. You get the Dow. Up by 108 points, 38,856. And you got the Russell just continuing higher, man, up by 1.9% so far, 37 points in the green at 2056. How about Bitcoin, man? You talk about quite a tear. 50,000, nice round number. Uh, the ETFs get approved. You spike to 49.4. You pull all the way back to a 38 thousand handle and just like that you're back above fifty thousand uh we're going to talk a little bit more about bitcoin throughout the program as well at one point crude just chopping around as well near the top end of that range 77 dollars is kind of the top end we're sitting at 76.95 right now in the price of crude you jump over to the gold contract gold negative by five dollars this morning now there's your daily okay we talked about this one before quite the consolidation gold has been in you spike 21.52 you pull back to 2000 this thing's just been chopping around between about 2000 and 2100 You're negative by about $5 right now in the gold contract. You jump over to notes and bonds. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, we're sitting on about 4.17. 4.17. Not a bad yield on the 10-year, man, as we've risen a bit from where we were. Odds of a cut, not exactly where they were, as we all know. A little bit higher for longer seems to be the trend there. We jump over to the dollar. And in the face of higher yields than the market may have expected, at least coming into the beginning of the year, we've risen all the way to 50% of the pullback from 107 down to 101. We're right at that 50% mark at 104.13 right now for the DXY, basically flat on the session. We talked about the VIX as well. Check out that volatility index. A little bit of a spike. The only thing I will say is we've gotten some spikes and they have been short-lived recently. Uh, each spike on the VIX, giving it up as this market just charges higher in the face of whatever gets in the way of this market to put it lightly right all right let's jump around to some of the stocks with action how about arm man how about masoyashi son right it's not stopping man this is a daily this is a daily chart folks this is like a one minute chart you got some it's a daily chart you come into their earnings last week gangbuster earnings plow higher on thursday basically chop around on friday we closed on thursday at 113.89 we closed on Friday at 115.21, so pretty much the same area. You got a nice green candle, but that's because you just dipped down to 102 before charging higher on Friday to almost 115 on the close. And then what happens today? Yeah, there's your 15-minute chart, man, as this thing takes off right on the open to 116 up to 164. If you're in the chip business, no matter where you are, it's a good time to be in the chip business, man. You jump over to NVIDIA shares. Still up by six tenths percent. They gave up some of the acceleration they had early in the day. 746 down to 715, up to 725. Uh, not bad, though, when you consider the, the run that this thing has had, of course, right? We're still sitting a week ago, not even. We were trading at what, 680? On six days ago, we were trading at 663. You just traded to 746. Now, we want to talk about some bonkers. You get into the fundamentals of this company. NVIDIA is now at $1.8 trillion, folks. NVIDIA is now at $1.8 trillion. For some context, it's the size of Amazon. Just like that, man, as this thing has quadrupled in price. Uh, it's also, what was the other one? Google, I think. Yeah, it's basically the same size as Amazon and Google right now. I mean, they're in a sweet spot right? You can't deny that. But at some point, these, these 
these lofty valuations of what the future may hold. We've talked about this before. You got about $800 is the A to B, C to D. I did not think when I was putting this on the charts when we broke above it on January 18th that you would accelerate up to 800 in the span of no time. And we are at 746 as of today. Pretty remarkable. And NVIDIA up by another half a percent with some volatility. Arm just crushing it. And let's check out some of those other stocks. Microsoft gives it up a bit. I say a bit, man. The run has been magnificent. No pun intended. Magnificent. Uh, Microsoft down 1.1% to kick things off. We talked about Amazon down 1.3% to kick things off. You jump off Apple for the week down 1%. Pretty remarkable. You get the NASDAQ 100 right now, only down 64 points when you look at some of the accelerations of the biggest companies out there, right? Jump over to Netflix shares. They're down two tenths percent. I saw Disney catching a bid today. Yeah, up about a percent for Disney, extending on some of the momentum they built last week. They still got some work to do, to put it lightly, right? Disney right now sitting at 110. Uber was a big one with some volatility last week, down about 2%. Just volatility everywhere on some of these growth stocks, man. We jump around. Salesforce down about 1.1% right now. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. All right, where do we jump to? Where do we kick things off? Let's see. What do we have pulled up? Yeah, we're not going to talk about that one yet. We're going to talk a little CPI. Where are we? Better get it up there. I think I have it up on this one. Forgive me, folks. Got a bunch of articles to talk about as we kick off the trading session. Yeah, come on. Shame on me. All right. You know what? We're going to jump to this one. Because this is an interesting one. to give us a little bit of a teaser as we come into this first break. Uh, interesting article from the journal. Is this today? I think so. Right? Yesterday. Okay. Stocks are at records, but are they expensive? This is what everybody wants to know, right? They are at records. One of the things you do want to consider, I talked to my dad about recently saying, you know, they're at records, but what did the S&P buy you when it was at its record two years ago versus what it buys you now? Well, you're above that level. That was only 4,800, first of all, okay? So you're already 240 points or 5% above where you were on the all-time highs of 4,800. But it's important to look at the acceleration these companies have had and the acceleration of the models in terms of the ratios I like to, to use, right? Tim Orton is ratios, man. He'll be on tomorrow, of course, as he is Tuesdays and Thursdays. The ratios, and we're not talking Tim's ratios, but we are talking ratios. We're talking economic ratios, whether you're talking about PE, et cetera, and interesting stuff when you take a look at some of these equities. That's what we'll look at when we get back, folks. S&P is barely in the red by two. Filling in for Tom today. Don't go away. We'll be right back in three minutes. 